Church, we read when David said that I was glad, yea, very glad when he said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Truly the Lord is in his holy temple, let her of all those be silent before him. Let us stand at the sun. Bishop Bax is going to bless us by leaving us in the congregational selection at this time. Reverend Jonah will lead us 
us in prayer this morning. Thank you so much, Sister Kelly. Let us bow this way to go to God in prayer. Almighty God, from whom all blessings flow, once again a few of your children come to tell you thank you. Thank you, Lord, that you've been mighty good to us. We confess that we've seen dangers and fears of dangers, and we've been in places that we knew not of. But Lord, you've been mighty good to keep us, God. And we thank you, Lord, that have given service to this country, God. And Lord, as we look at, Lord, our countries are being at war with each other, we pray for peace, God. We pray, Lord, for the Isaiah text that one of these days that we'll take our weapons of warfare and beat them at the fly share and literally study at war no more. We're praying, Lord, for peace that only you can give. We thank you, Lord, as we come to give your name, the glory, the honor, and the praise. We thank you, Lord, for the pastor of this branch of Zion. We thank the Lord for saints that have gathered here years, oh God. And we bless your name. So we come to worship you today. We come to tell you thank you. Bless us as only you can, God. You help us to be a blessing one to another. We thank you, Lord. And as I ask us to say, run from mind to mind and heart to heart. Keep us as only you can. In Jesus' name we pray, let the Redeemer of the Lord say amen. 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 Amen.
have our chief with us this morning, and on behalf of the city council and our mayor and our city council and Mr. Peter Varney, our city manager, Mr. Johnson, we want to thank you as we make this proclamation to you this morning. Thank you for your service and thank you for your family. Uh, Sister Natalie Miller, who served with you, sent her, her love to you and how you have been a role model for us. Our uh, chief of police uh, will make our proclamation this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Brooke Miller Presents. Switch to Miss Arva. Switch to Miss Arva. Good morning again. Um, we're going to be presenting to Miss Arva Johnson from the city of Rocky Mount, North Carolina, presented to Arva Marie Johnson in recognition of service as first African-American female United States Capitol Police officer with sincere best wishes in witness thereof, I hereunto set his hand to all upon this official seal of the city of Rocky Mountain, 28th day of February, 2022, our mayor, Danny. in just a little while, but we, we're just thankful that Pastor Jordan has stopped by. Uh, a young man who do a lot of work here, so glad he stopped for just a few minutes. At this time, we will receive our offering. We're going to ask Brother Alexander Cobb to come forth at this time. I know it's home early. There you go, Brother Cobb and your team. And at this time, the ushers will receive our offering as Bishop Bax will give us some more to music.
gifts that you have. So touch hearts and move the plug hearts, Lord, to present to you. We ask, Lord, that not only will you bless these gifts, but we ask that you will bless the givers. For we do pray in Jesus' name. American history now, today. You, you, you got my black history uh, message last Sunday. You won't get that one this Sunday. Mm. But nevertheless, it's always, it's always integrated because one of the things that I said, and I've learned, especially over the last 10 to 15 years, you don't always know when you're living history. You don't always know when you have come to touch. We have greatness in history, <clears throat> but that is happening every day. So I want to begin our remarks this morning by focusing on what the city council actually did over the last month or so. They've been highlighting some greatness among us. And most of you should have gotten this book that I may not have run off, we may not have run off enough, but you should have. And I'm going to call names. If you're here, I just want you to stand. Again, these are just some heroes that are among us um, that were recognized. And I know at least one is deceased, but nevertheless, Sister Katie Pope Hunter, Sister Barbara Wright, Sister Dolores Kelly. I do believe I have seen her here. Will you please stand? Brother George Cooper. I don't think I saw George Cooper. We have two young ladies that were acknowledged. Sister Dolores Kidman. Sister Gloria Harrington. And of course, we have the legendary Brother William, uh, Captain Chief Willie Williams. And I think, did I see Brother John? Is it John Manley? Okay, I thought I was a mess. I can't always tell who I'm looking at. But nevertheless, we do have at least one of these august individuals standing. And I'm glad they acknowledge them because law enforcement has not always been uh, a place where African Americans could serve. Um, if you know any history whatsoever, you know that uh, law enforcement kind of morphed from first the slave hunters and, and the KKK, everybody, if they, they thought they could legally carry a gun, that's what they did. And we were not in that group. But over time, we have, and it is good to see African Americans in law enforcement, because church, I get to do what a lot of my compadres do. Sometimes I get to pick up the phone and say, hey, chief, so-and-so. And it's just what happens that God has blessed me and that, you know, I have a cousin who was, first cousin, who was sheriff in Bertie County for many, many years, John Holly, uh, blessed with the sheriff in Herford County. I went to school with Warren Bone for many, many years. Richmond County, we just lost our beloved sheriff there. So I've had the privilege of knowing many and I'm telling you, there's nothing better than being able to pick up the phone, call someone, and let them know what's going on before a new knock on your door. But hmm. amen. All right, man. So we're glad for these individuals who have blazed the trail and are walking among us. But I'm also absolutely thrilled that this morning, we are going to be introduced to a hero with close connections to this church. Amen. Amen. Your aunt very well. 
And most of us are aware of January 6th. I hope all of us are. And we've all have seen in film, in particular, that black policeman that could led the insurrection a different way. I tell you, he's my hero. But he's not the only one that's a hero. Sister Yvonne Davis, will you come forth at this time and introduce our honoree before she comes and gives us some words? But it is a distinct pleasure to see the bonds, the Woolies, the Andrews, the Bullets. I grew up with these guys, and I've been knowing them all my life. Since and it's a pleasure to have Since today. to be up in their house. I'm asking you to pull it down. You're far enough away, we're okay. okay. Right. It's a pleasure to know all of you. This morning, I'm going to introduce a young lady who was, at the time, very shy. <laughs> But she also was a very nice young lady. And, and she she went far. She left here and she went to Washington, DC. And that's where she her life started to begin. Now, we don't all know about Martin Luther King, Harry Tubbs, and we all know about Rosa Parks. But I want to introduce you a lady who we some know and some, some of us know, but some of us don't. Miss Oliver B. Willie Johnson was the first black woman to serve as a United States Capitol Police, and she retired from this. Well, during that time, this time in her life, I knew her from little, from South Rocky Mountain, down on Burnett Street and Patrick Street. My family grew up on one corner, and her family grew up on the other corner. In the household, there were three families. There was uh, Anna Maria, mother, who had five girls, Miss Magnolia Bonds and Eleanor Bonds, who had five girls and one boy, and Miss uh, Perlene, Miss Andrew, Perlene Andrew had one son. Now, we played a lot together. We did a lot of things together. As, as, a, fact, as a matter of fact, we became very adventurous because we had to go outside, and our mother said, stay outside, don't come back in the house. So we had to find something to do. So we did a number of things. We played jack rocks. We, we, Jump rope, we played hot dogs, and we 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 had that camaraderie with each other. We walked. It. Remember walking to Booker T. Payne on the Murder Road side? We did that. We had to walk to the movie, and they said, if you don't go to church, you don't go to the movie. So I'm a real, I'm a life was a good life, and I enjoyed growing up with you and your cousins and sisters. So I'm going to let you come forward and come tell about your life in Washington D.C. Northern area. Thank you. Thank you so much for what you've done in Washington, D.C. and in your life, and I want you to carry on whatever you got to do to make your life better. Real quick, real quick, real quick. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Amen. First, to give an honor to God. But putting me in the position that I'm in, I want to come back home. But I want to recognize one person that started on my pathway in Washington, D.C. Beverly. She was the one that told me the Capitol Police would be hiring. I didn't realize my daughter and grandmother would be here. And my whole family to support me. Thank you so much for honoring me today. <laughs> 
Repentance towards God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. And now, behold, I go bound in the Spirit unto Jerusalem, not knowing the things that shall befall me there, save that the Holy Ghost witness in every city, saying <coughs> that bonds and afflictions abide me. For none of these things move me, neither tell I my life give to myself, so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. Church, from these verses we want to take as our thought. Finishing the course is a mindset. Finishing the course is a mindset. Father God, I thank you. I thank you for what my eyes have witnessed unto, what my ears have heard. Lord, thank you what my spirit has been able to bear witness of on this day. Now, Father God, as we would focus on your word, I do ask, Lord, that you would give us ears that hear and hearts that receive. You know I have prepared, Lord, but need your power. I've studied, Lord, but need your spirit. So I have your way this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 You may be seated. I mean, please give the baby, I apologize, because I don't know where you got the baby crying. That's, that's my fault. I, I got it crying. But real soon, she'll stop crying. Amen. Finishing the course is a mindset. It's a mindset. It's a mindset. Finishing the course. Finishing the course actually begins before you finish or you end the course. Someone was talking to me about that this week as I was 
trying out some information, and they said, oh, do you need to retire? I said, exactly. Finishing the course begins before we retire. It begins before we reach the home stretch. Finishing the course begins before we're on our sick day. <coughs> Finishing the course begins before the funeral message. The Bible says that Romans 8, for thy sake, we are killed all day long. Church, it's a mindset that has to be present when you're doing important work. Hmm. When you're doing important work, you have to have a specific mindset. Right. Otherwise, you will not finish the course. Hmm. And this morning, all I want to do is take a few minutes to look at this mindset in action. Because in this passage of scripture in Acts chapter 20, it deals with a mindset. It deals with Paul's mind. It deals with, it, he kind of calmly brings everything together that we've been talking about over the last really almost year. We talked about the fact a couple of weeks ago that he was going to Jerusalem, that he was going to take the offering. Now he comes back. He says again, I'm going to Jerusalem. Don't know what's going to happen, but I'm going to Jerusalem. But before he does any of that, verse 17, he calls when I'm going to call a pastor's conference. Because verse 17 says that from my leaders, he sent to Ephesus for the elders of the churches. He said, I've got something that I want to say. He said, send for the elders. Church, there's sometimes you can't say everything to everybody. Amen. You just can't do it. Hmm. Can't do it. Paul had been entrusted with some super, super important work. This work was so important that church keeps sold out to get it done. But let me tell you what the burden of this work was. Because I looked at something on Facebook last night, to be quite honest, kind of made me sad. As I heard someone say something. Because they were addressing the burden. Whether we like it or not, God gives the vision, he gives the burden, he gives the responsibility to certain individuals at different times. Amen. Not everybody is called to the same ministry. Let me just break it down a little bit. When we start talking about African American history, every now and then I hear people talk about, I could not have done that. Hmm. Amen. Hmm. And they're 100% right. Amen. Because if God didn't call us, more than likely, the reason He didn't call us is because He didn't put the capacity in us right, to be able to function and be fruitful within that capacity. Mm. Right, come on, Folk listen to me all the time lately. They've heard me say that one thing I was not going to do, could not do, just wouldn't do, mm. was go to the military. Mm. I honor people who serve in the military. Amen, amen. That was not my call. I know that's right. That wasn't my call. <laughs> Still ain't my call. I, know that's right. I used to tell my mom, I have all these career military people in my family. I told them, I said, if I have to go, I'm, I'm going to be going to the Air Force and I'm going to fly so high they can't shoot me down. <laughs> <laughs> I am no good in anybody's military. I know that's right. But there are other things that God, God knew I could do. We just got through talking about law enforcement. I promise you, we have people who we don't want to have a legal gun. I like that. That were called and they can't. They don't have the discipline. I'll say this one quick example to make the point and I'll move on. Very good friend of mine, Herbert County, a policeman, former policeman, was asked to go into prison. And the prisoner spit in his face. Mm. Mm -hmm. And what did he do? He clocked. 
That's why he's a former police. <laughs> <laughs> because you've got to be able to take stuff. Mm -hmm. When God calls you to serve in these incredible positions, the burden is on you. It's Amen. not on them. Amen. There are a whole lot of people who do not respect what we do in our capacities, but that's because they haven't been called. All right now. Amen. And part of the burden is that God calls us sometimes to serve people who don't want to be served. All right now. Y'all right don't get that. Y'all right 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 don't get that. Hmm. That's why a lot of people are the first and the only. Hmm. Because they are in a position where they're trying to help people who don't want to be helped. Mm -hmm. But nevertheless, the burden is still to serve. Now, right now. And that was Paul's burden. Paul's burden was that God called him to be a missionary to the Gentiles, whether they wanted it or not. Mm -hmm. And he had to serve. That was his burden. That was his passion. That was his calling. But again, just because it was his, it didn't mean that everybody else supported him in his calling. Amen. So therefore, when I see in verse 17, I see where he did what 2 Peter 1.1 1, 1 says. In 2 Peter 1.1, 1, 1, Peter talks about those who have obtained like-minded faith. Mm. Yes. What in the world does that mean? Mm. Obtain like minded faith. In other words, he said people who understand right. the mission. Mm -hmm. People who understand the call. People who answer the call and therefore now you understand what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Not only did you accept the call, but you now understand the trial that comes along with it. You understand the trouble, the cloud, the hindrances, the obstacles. He called the elders. Mm. He said, meet me. We need to have a conversation. Mm. Verse 17 says again, he called for the elders of the church. And they came. And then he says four things very quickly. Can you see how much time we He says four things that are very, 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 very important. Again, he's calling people of like-minded passions. He's calling people who have served. Church, if you have ever had any kind of service, and all of us, we've served in some capacity. I don't care if you were the first principal, the, the first uh, Air Force person in your family, or the first whatever. You understand service. Hmm. And you understand that service is not easy because a burden comes with it. All right, man. All right, man. Paul down is going to talk about the mindset that it takes mm. to be successful in service. The mindset. Because not everybody has the right mindset. Right. I remember many years ago, I don't even remember now who said it. I don't know if I was talking to someone or what. But I remember a kid saying, goes up to the teacher. I don't know if I was in the room or if I was the teacher. I just can't remember. I'm old now. <laughs> but the kid said this. Give me a list of where black folk have not served because I want to become the first. That's not a good, that, that actually, as good as that sounds, it's not that good. Mm -hmm. Because church, the answer was, no, that's not how you figured that out. You have to learn what your passion is. All right now. All right now. And you gotta follow your passion. That's right. Because that becomes your purpose. Mm. If you go into some just to be the first, come on now. You'll probably fail. Mm. You have to find your passion and pursue with purpose. That's right. Paul calls them together, and then he talks about the mindset. He says this in verse eighteen. It says when they came. He says, first of all, when I first came, you know how I served. Mm. You know from the first day that I came to Asia, you know the manner that I have been with you in all seasons. He says, you know how I served. Mm. You know, you, 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 you remember the mindset that I, he said, when I came to you, I actually 
my job to serve. Let me just hit a little first. I'm sorry. He says, you know the matter of, of life that I have with you. He says, when I came, you know that first of all, rather than take your money, I said, I will use my skills as a tent maker. Mm. Because I don't want to put a burden on you. I want you to see that I am more concerned about your soul mm. than I am about money right and now. stuff and material goods. All right now. One of the things that bothers me about our young people today. Come on now. I remember when I was going through an all black school. One of the things they used to tell us all the time. Education is absolutely an excellent place to go. You can make a difference in a life. Mm. You may not make a lot of money, but you make a difference. Mm. And I heard that over and over and over. And I looked around. Guess who the richest people that I knew? They were all educators. Mm. And yes, I did. The lawyers and Indian chiefs, amen, sister. Knew them all. But it was the educators from, for some reason that they could walk down the street and everybody would call their name and, and they would honor them. And there was something about being an educator. Mm. But nowadays, all our children are told to follow the money. Mm. Follow the money, mm. follow the money, follow the money. Mm. Not many of them find the money. All right now. All right now. We need to talk to them about something else. Yes, sir. We need to talk to them about making a difference in their community. Yes, sir. We need to. One of the things I find so interesting, well, I got law enforcement representatives mm. here. I'm going to talk about my hometown in Hertford County. Mm. I was an educator there for, I don't know, 18 years, I guess. And I had, I had all these kids come through me. Some of them were brilliant, some of them worked, most of them tried. It is amazing to me that a lot of the black kids that I've taught, they all left home. Mm. Many, many, thank God, many were successful. Amen. But what I have come to absolutely bothers my mind is that many of the white kids stayed. Mm. And those who barely made it out of school, many of them served on the police department. Mm. <laughs> and they have good jobs. Mm. And they are leaders in the community. But where are our people? Mm. We're out searching something for something that they just don't seem to find. Mm -hmm. We don't let them know that they can make a difference in our community. Come on, man. Come on, man. Mm. I go back home and I see this person and that person, and I'm like, is this our police department? Mm. <laughs> but it is. <laughs> and I cannot find my African American students. So, those that had talent, those that had a great future. Again, not all of them went away and got lost. Some did well. But many, I just don't know. Hmm. I'm just making a point. If you can have average to below, white folk end up in law enforcement. Hmm. 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 We need to, well, amen. <laughs> Paul said, you know my lifestyle. You, you know that when I came, I didn't come because of money. Mm. He said, I didn't come to you because I wanted to get rich. Mm. Mm -hmm. Too many people, if they don't get paid, they won't do All it. Right now. For someone to mm. do it mm. without the money, it takes a certain mindset. All right now. Yeah. It takes it. a certain mindset. Yes, sir. I was a recipient of a black school where they told us over and over that the community mm, mm, mm. is important. All right now. Give back. But yeah. it's a mindset. Paul said, when I came, I didn't come like everybody else. Mm. But it's a mindset. He said, not only that, he said, next verse, you know how I served. Mm. I tried to get I'm services for you. I tried to get goods for you. I tried to make you better. Mm, mm, mm. Church, I can't even tell you. Because this is the stuff that doesn't make the paper. Come on, Many man. of you, you have kids get into school, kids get into college, you have kids get jobs, have kids purchase homes. That stuff doesn't make it into the paper. All right, man. Come on, but I'm here to tell you that Paul would say that these are the things that I did. He said, I did it for you. I did not come to be served. 
church. Come on now. I came to serve. Mm -hmm. But church, that's a very different mindset yes, sir. Yes, sir. than what a whole lot of our people have. Mm -hmm. A whole lot of our people have a mindset that you got to serve them. Mm -hmm. I can even talk about my colleagues because I don't hang out with a whole lot of them. All right, now tell me about it. Because I am not here to find out how much I can get, how I can get it. Come on, man. Mm -hmm. Come on, man. Mm -hmm. Come on, man. Austin Memorial knows oh, me better man. than you guys, but they know one thing that has never been about getting. Because what I also was taught in a black school is that God will provide. But I'm here to tell you that I've been known and now I'm long, but I have never mm -hmm. seen the righteous forsaken. Right, God can see that work. God will provide. And he's talking to those of like-minded faith. He said, you know how I came unto you. He said, you know how I came. He said, you know how I served. And then he says this. He says, but not only that. He said, you know my lifestyle itself. Mm. You know my lifestyle. Yeah, that's what he's talking about when you get to Rome, verse 19. He says, you know my lifestyle. Serving the Lord with all humility of mind and with tears and temptations, which befell me by the line in the way of the Jews. He said, you know my lifestyle. Church, <laughs> wow. Sometimes I cringe. I cringe when I find out what we do, when we get into careers, when we get into business. We get there and we think that we own it I'm here, I made it. Forget about everybody mm -hmm. who needs it. Right. Come on now. Right. Come on, and we man. lose our minds, we start thinking that we have the option of taking this and taking that. And <laughs> I know a young man. Yeah, I think I can say this. <laughs> I know a young man who worked at the shipyard. I don't know how many years he worked there. But this same young man actually was able to open up a whole business where he painted stuff. And if you get too close, you would read property of... <laughs> I'm just saying. Just saying. But Paul is making the point that you know my lifestyle. He said, I didn't take anything that didn't belong to me. All right, now. And I'm talking to church folks. Maybe I should put it this way. <laughs> I didn't touch anybody that wasn't mine. All right, now. Didn't get a dime that wasn't given to me in an mm. He said, I didn't do any of that stuff. You know my mindset. He now. said, you know how I came unto you. Mm. He said, I have learned my that God. in whatever state I'm in, mm. Mm. I can be content. Yes, sir. I can have, I cannot have. Mm. But regardless, I am content. Yes, because sir. contentment with godliness. Come on now. Man. It's great game. Yes, sir. He said, you know how I serve. Mm. You know my lifestyle. My, my, my. But church, don't miss the point I'm trying to make. Everybody can't do that. Yes, sir. It takes a certain mindset. Mm. Amen. Amen. It takes a certain mindset. My, my, my. Paul said, I wasn't one of those that to the victor goes the spoils. You know, it takes a certain mindset. Mm. He said, so that's how I can. You know how I live, you know how I serve, you know how I love them. He said, you know my passion. But now, this is where the message really takes a turn for me. And I church, I'm going to tell you, <coughs> wow. Mm. He said in verse 22, he said, but now, the spirit has been compelling me. He said, I've got, I've got to go to Jerusalem. <coughs> We've been talking about him going to Jerusalem, taking an offering, but he tells us a little something different here. He says, I am getting ready to go to Jerusalem. He said, and I don't know what's going to happen to me. Mm. He said, I don't have an idea. All I know is that every time I go into a city, mm. prophets start telling me that you don't want to go because some bad stuff is going to happen. Mm. Mm. He said, but you know, I've got to go 
because the spirit is leading. All right now. The spirit is leading me to go. I know folk are telling you, don't do it. Mm. If I were you, I wouldn't serve in no Washington, D.C. Mm. If I were you, Senate Council, I ain't going down there. You know how, you know them, you, you've heard of them, right? You, yes, sir. You, you know some of those folks? Come on now. Yes, he sir. said, every time I go into a city, somebody says, if I were you, mm, mm, mm. I would. But Paul said, that's because they don't have the mindset. All right, now. If you have the right mindset, you know that if the Spirit leads you, the Spirit's going to keep you. All right, now. If yes, you have the right mindset, yes, you know that wherever the Spirit would guide your steps, that God is going to make sure that you don't fall in the trap of what it said. If you follow the Holy Spirit. All right, now. He yes, said, I, they're, they're, they're telling me, they're clamoring. He said, but I want you to understand, it is the spirit mm. that is telling me to go. And I don't know where I'm going. And I don't know what's going to happen. Church, it takes a certain mindset yes, sir. for somebody to go to a place mm. that maybe they haven't been before. Some people would just call them foolish. Mm -hmm. I've been called foolish in my life. Mm. When I went to Philadelphia, I went sight unseen. I never been to the place in my life. I took a blue suitcase and had everything that I owned in the world. Mm. Mm. And you could twirl it on your finger. <laughs> that was all my earthly possessions. Went to a place, didn't know where I was going. I just know the Lord said. All right, man. That's where you need yes, to be. Yes. Paul mm. is saying, it takes a certain mindset that's been cultivated by the Spirit for somebody to step out on faith, mm. believing that God will. Church, if you just keep waiting until you know every step of the way, you got everything worked out, you can be 70 years old still <laughs> waiting for people to work it out. <laughs> okay. It'll never be paid so smooth that all you got to do is lie. Mm -hmm. You gotta at some point step out on faith. I'm reading this book. I got the name of the book, but it, you've heard me talk about it. it. Deals with the great black migration. I tell you, some of these people they said, "I look at where I am. I care about what can be. I'm gone." Some of them were your mamas and your daddies, Amen. your aunties and your uncles, yes. your daddies and your mamas. They were young folk, our folk. But they simply because of where they were, they believed God. And they stepped out. Amen. Paul says here, he said, I don't know what's going to happen to me. He said, but because of my mindset, I'm going. And somebody, I don't know, I want to see somebody saying that. Yeah, but. And then Paul reminds them of something. When I look, Back over my life. Mm. I can see pitfalls that I didn't see when I was walking through. All right, All right. Mm. But if the God who I serve could have kept me from that, who am I to say that he can keep me from somebody else? That's why right, he emptied the emphasis to the vessel by slave to the God who is able to keep me from falling. Because he's done it in the past, yep. I'm going to trust that he's going to do it in the future. But church, it takes a certain mindset for God to tell you to go. And you leave everything behind and then go. I think I want to hear one more verse and we'll close this thing. He says, verse 24. He said, well, none of these things move me, neither count my life. He said, if they talk to me, he said, but none of that stuff moved me. He said, I don't count my life so dear to myself that I, that I might finish my course. He said, I hear them talking, but I'm more concerned about what God's going to say. Right. I, I know it's good to say it, and maybe I can, you know, I can live off of the interest that I've stored up. He said, but if I'm going to finish my course strong, I got to still keep following. Yes, sir. 
what God has done. See, church, sometimes what we think is the end mm, come on now. is not the end. All right, now. And it takes a certain mindset to understand that just because I finish this mm. doesn't mean I'm finished. That's All right. right. It means that simply God is just directing me somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So he says to them, no, 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 I hear him. He says, but I've got to trust the Lord. And he says, one other thing that I want to hear, and then we're going to come. Verse 26. Let me read 25 and 26 again. He says, now Lord, I know that you all, among whom I have gone preaching, the kingdom of God shall see my face no more. Wherefore, I take you to record this day that I am pure from the blood of all men. Church, mm -hmm. that is an incredible statement. Mm -hmm. He said, you got to understand you may not see me again. He said, but in many ways, that's okay. Mm -hmm. He said, because I stand before God innocent of the fact that I have preached the gospel to you. I mm. have told you what God required. I have told you, and I told you, and I told you. Mm. He said, so I'm innocent of the blood. Your decisions are your decisions. But I have done what God has asked me to do. Yes, sir. Church, for you, it takes a certain mindset to know that you've done what God has required of you. Yes. That you have not had somebody come in your presence and let them leave without doing your due diligence. Amen. Paul said, I want you to understand, I have done Jesus. what God has asked me to do for you. Yes, sir. He said, so if I don't see you again, mm. it's all right. That's all right. He didn't say, I'm oh, ready to die and it's all over. He said, no, what I have done I want you to understand, I've done it, to, I've done it up to God so much so that I know that I don't know anything. All right. Church, there have been so many times in my, I don't know, 30 plus years of preaching. Folk have wanted me to preach certain things and preach certain ways. Because, mm. you know, things change. Mm. Want the choir to sing certain songs, get away mm. from hymns, let's just do praise, get away from praise, let's just do whatever. Mm. Folk over time want you to compromise, want you to change, mm. want you to do all kinds of things. Mm, mm, mm. And in particular, church, if you are in those positions where well, you're the only one. Mm. So I've been in a lot of places where I'm the only one mm, mm, mm. that looks like me. Come on now. In fact, I'm in a place right now, y'all pray for me. I live, you know, during the week I live and work in Virginia as a state, as a school superintendent. I got Donald Trump Jr. who has come in and he has done this report. They, they, they erase, they're in the process of trying to erase anything mm, mm. that talks about equity, mm, mm. that talks about culture, that addresses race. Mm. And not only have they done it at the state level, now they're now saying that they got to come. And that somehow or another, I got to purge the things that I put in place so that little black boys and girls can have the same footing as they're up here. Not going to do it. Come on now. Just can't do it. All right now. Yes, There's something you cannot do. All right now. Yes, sir. God has called me. I know who he called me to, and I know how he's called me to serve. All right now. I know who keeps who the people. Just like Paul was called to the Gentiles, church, I didn't go to all black school for nothing. All right now. Even though I serve everybody, church, I always keep my ear on the ground. Mm -hmm. To make sure that I'm helping those that look like me. All right, now. Amen. Yes, sir. And we got somebody telling me now that you got, well, by the way, all those of you in here that are so progressive that you believe that we live in a colorblind society, come on now. you need to come and walk with me. All me. right, now. Yes, just walk with me for one day. Come on, now. We can't get excited and happy just because right, one or two have made it. Come on, now. We still got work to do. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No, no, no. Mindset. 
Mm. If I don't see you again, I'm innocent of your blood. It's a mindset. Yes, church, sir. if you can walk out of the church, you can walk out of the place after years of service and say, I'm innocent. Mm. They may bust hell wide open, but it won't be because they didn't hear it. All right, now. Hello, somebody. Yes, sir. Yes, no, somebody. All right, now. It's not because their word wasn't true. Mm. Because the word is the power. He oh, said, man. I preach. He said, I'm innocent. He said, you got to have a certain mindset mm, mm, mm. to be in this business. Yes, sir. Because God can call you here today, and he can call you there tomorrow. Come on, now. You can be serving in the capital. Next thing you know, you might be serving in New York City. And mm. God bless you if you end up there. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and so, mm. as I close, mm. I just simply say this. Same thing that Paul said. He said, I'm about to leave. He said, if you read the rest of the chapter, he simply says this. So, he said, be on your guard. Mm. Beware. Beware. He said, you may not see me again. He said, but you need to keep your guards up. Mm. He said, because the wolves are going to come. Mm. Wolves just looking for an opportunity. Whew. That person that always talking about the word is gone now. Mm. Now we can talk about some more popular things. The wolves are going to look for an opportunity. Yes, sir. Foxes, snakes, whatever mm. you want to call them, they're going to start prowling and sniffing around. Mm. He said, I want you to know you need to be careful. Mm. He said, because they're coming. Church, if you're going to be a pioneer, you know, we start off talking about being on the vanguard. Mm. He said, if you're going to be in the vanguard, you're going to be a pioneer. He said, you got to have a certain mindset. Yes, sir. He said, and the mindset is, you also got to understand that when they, when they start coming, that you're going to have to stand. Yes, if sir. I, church, if I could just say it, I believe that you would say it like you said in Philippians chapter 2. I believe you would say something like, let this mind be in you, mm. which was also in Christ Jesus. That even though he was equal with God, he didn't come counting robbery. Mm. To come down and take on the form of a man. He said because of his mindset. He didn't worry about being in glory, but he stooped. Somebody said he stooped. Yes, sir, stooped. Come on, man. And yes, he came sir. down. Church, you got to stoop to walk in somebody else's shoes. Right, he said man. God stooped. Yes, sir. And he took on the form of a man, sir. Mm. So that he could walk with us, he would yoke with us. So that we would learn what kind of a mindset we need to have. Mm. So that we will learn that you need to have the mind of God, wherein you trust God, even when you can't see it for yourself. Yes, yes. I'm gonna go. We're gonna go. I'm past my time. But it's all about having the right mind. Yes, sir. It's all about not worrying about what folk are gonna say. Mm. I hate to say it, church, but we all like crabs a little bit. All right, man. Great. Somebody get up. We pull them down. All right, man. So you can't worry about folk. Yes, sir. You got to create a mindset mm. that is a pact between you and God. Mm. Between you and your God. And that's what you need to do. Just keep looking up. Mm. Just keep looking up. When trouble comes, look up. Right now. When you don't understand, look up. Come on now. Paul said, I ain't worried. I'm done what I need to do. I'm mm. just going to look up mm. and trust. Uh -huh. Yes, yes, sir. Church, just a mind. My, my, my. Father God, I thank you this morning. Lord, I just thank you for who you are. Father God, I thank you for this example. Mm. This example of a person that put purpose and passion above the, 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 the pettiness of people. I thank you for him illustrating to us that we've got to put purpose and passion above even our closest friends. If we're going to be a person of significance, if we're going to make an impact in our current life, Father, in, our, in the days of our children, Lord, let us take on your mind that we can be impactful and make a difference. This is your servant's prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Yes, sir. Wow. Hmm. To say to a church of elders, hmm. to say to those you train, I've done it. 
done what God has asked me to do. Yes. I didn't even I didn't even pick up Philippians or First Timothy, where he said, "Fought the good fight." He said, "Therefore, I can finish strong." Because I don't have anything to hold in me. There's no, there, there's no, there's no garbage. Mm. I can finish strong because then nobody said he got a baby over there. Come on now. Yes, I heard he got he got uh, something over there too. No, 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 no. Come on now. Because of your mindset, yes, you can run the race yes, that God has set before you. No, no, no. You ain't worried about telling me. Mm. You can finish your course yes. Yes, sir. because of how you are right now. Mm. Mm. Church, mm. let this mind be in you. Put us in Christ. There may be somebody here this morning. You don't know Jesus in the word of your sins. The doors of the church are open. What'd you say? What'd you say? What'd you say? I am kingdom's preachers. Go stand we don't know Christ, we invite you to come back.